God damn, here we are yet again with more cannon fodder. The latest issue is number 117, which means a very special, chief-oriented issue. As if there were any other option. Still, despite that singular focus, this issue is jam-packed with exciting news and some awesome community collaboration. So, let's dive in and, afterwards, definitely check out the full article. The issue starts out with what might be the biggest lore-based Halo news since Halo Warfleet, though for me it's personally the biggest Halo news, period. The announcement of a new Halo encyclopedia. Now, if you aren't familiar, one of the first projects released by the fledgling 343 back in 2010 was the Halo Encyclopedia, meant as an official guide to Halo's universe and lore. However, despite a foreword from franchise development director Frank O'Connor and plenty of acknowledgments, the main workload was done by the publisher with Tobias Buckle editing. While Mr. Buckle is a noted Halo fan and author of four fantastic Halo stories, having so much outside influence definitely hurt the final product. The encyclopedia upon release was criticized for its poor organization, layout, and even grammar. A lot of influence from Halo fan sites, especially Halopedia, was found throughout the book, including text directly copied from the site in at least a few instances. And of course, canon errors abound. A revised edition was released in 2011, featuring a few edits and some new information concerning Halo Reach, but ultimately the project just wasn't up to snuff. But now, more than 10 years later, we're finally getting another go at an encyclopedia. The book features a beautiful, infinite-themed cover art that also calls back to the original and is drawn by Sparth. Like more recent 343 guides such as Mythos and Warfleet, the insides of this book will feature a mix of existing art and assets along with tons of new material. And like they've been known to do, 343 once again consulted Halo lore master Stephen Loftus. If you haven't heard that name before, Stephen Loftus is well known in the Halo community for his expansive knowledge of Halo, though in particular his Determining the Scale of the Halo Universe project, which I'm sure most of you have heard of or even used, at least to some degree. In short, this guy knows his stuff and it's a big positive to have him consulting on this new encyclopedia. 343 also reached out to the Sins of the Prophets crew to add some visual ship flair to the book. Sins of the Prophets is a total conversion mod for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion and over the years, the team has had to create a number of unique assets for their game, including the DDS class supercarrier I featured in my recent timeline video. Needless to say, the team's inclusion on this project is a huge bonus and I'm excited to see the fruits of their labor. Speaking of which, we actually get a preview of some of the art that will be featured, starting with a full render of Spartan 3 Lucy B091 in her full Gen 2 armor. I still don't care for the Athlon armor set as a whole, but I love seeing a proper render of Lucy, and I hope we get to see more Spartans visualized, especially ones we haven't actually seen before. Maybe we could finally see Rosenda in proper canon attire, but neither here nor there. Next is a beautiful Silent Shadow operative drawn by David Heidhoff, who also made the Lucy render we just looked at. David has previously contributed some gorgeous art to Halo Mythos. After that, we have this beautiful render of a Varric Pattern ORS class heavy cruiser created by Jared Harris of the SOTP team. The ORS was first revealed as part of the Halo Fleet Battles tabletop game, which is sadly now defunct, but it has never looked better. I also like that the ship's pattern or its design is called out here. I wonder how many design patterns for known ships we might see listed, even if they aren't all visualized. Finally, we have a real surprise, the C-718 Longsword, art by Ben Morrow. This absolute unit of a ship is completely new, and its appearance here gives me some hope that this encyclopedia will be used to sort out a ton of canon inconsistencies and issues that have built up over the years, such as discrepancies with the various Longsword models. We know of three at the moment, but the details there are very muddied. Overall, if you can't tell already, this new encyclopedia has me extremely excited. And on top of everything else, this absolute monster will be 500 pages long. For context, the 2011 encyclopedia, the longer of the two versions released, was 368 pages. That's a huge increase, 25% by 343's count, and one that I'm sure 343 is going to make full use of. The new Halo encyclopedia will release on March 29th, 2022. 
Interestingly, that's the same month Halo the Rubicon Protocol releases, so I'll be curious to see whether the contents of that book are at all covered in the encyclopedia. The section on the encyclopedia closes with a bit from Frank O'Connor himself, which I think is probably better left for y'all to read for yourselves, but definitely check it out. Pre-orders for the encyclopedia are not yet up, but we're told to stay tuned. From there, the article moves on to more 117-centric material. Now, there isn't a lot of canon material for me to really break down here, at least nothing of consequence. Videos like this aren't supposed to just be me reading off the articles as presented, but taking the information in those articles and adding additional context, in the case of canon fodder, lore-based context, that might not land for everyone. The rest of the article is good, don't get me wrong, I'm just letting you know that there's not a whole lot of canon material here. Anyway, after some basic biographical information, we get a small gallery of the Chief's look over the years. Funny enough, when the article first went live, the CE picture was actually just a green multiplayer Spartan on the CE map, and I'm gonna butcher the hell out of this, Gephrophobia. The image has since been updated, however. Among these various images, too, is a brand new render of the Master Chief in his Mark VI Gen 3 armor, and damn does it look great. Also a nice hello from Mr. Chief down there. From there, the article highlights the various actors who have or will portray the Master Chief. At the top, you of course have 97.1 The Drive's very own Steve Downs. That's the radio station he used to work at, by the way. Funny little side story, my mom listened to just about nothing but The Drive and NPR when I was a kid, so I unknowingly grew up with Steve Downs in my ear. Discovering that later in my life was mind-blowing. Next up, though, is Bruce Thomas, the main man who has been performing the motion capture for the Master Chief since Halo 4. Bruce also voiced the unknown interrogator in Halo 4's prologue. Bruce has brought a whole new life to the Chief with his mocap work, and I'm excited to see more of it in Halo Infinite. After that, we have Daniel Cudmore, the 6'6 monster of a man who wore the suit for Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn. The Chief's voiceover was performed by Alex Puccinelli in that production. And the final man on the list is Pablo Schreiber, who will, of course, portray Master Chief in the upcoming Halo TV series, which is due to air next year. Numerous other people have also portrayed the Chief in various manners over the years, such as David Wald for Halo Legends, or people cosplaying the Chief in an official capacity for various events. The article moves on from there, with testimonials from the community about the Chief. Brendan Lowry of Windows Central, Alex Wakeford, a.k.a. Horaspis, and Claude Herrera, the father of the Halo community. Several podcasters contributed as well. The Luminary, a more recent Halo podcast, Podcast Evolved, The Sacred Icon podcast, Podtacular, and the Forward Unto Dawn podcast. And of course, a few YouTubers, including myself, Installation Zero Zero, and Hidden Xperia. Each testimonial, written or recorded, dives into the Master Chief in some manner, be that from an in-universe point of view or real world, or a mix of both. There is a ton of content to enjoy here, so be sure to check out the original article for all of that. I still need to get through it all myself, but the bits I've heard so far are really good. Wrapping things up is a shout-out for Halopedia, the Halo Wiki. I cannot stress enough how much Halopedia has helped with my various videos over the years, from direct sourcing to making me reconsider certain preconceived notions. It's an invaluable tool, and apparently 1343 will occasionally make use of. I'm not too surprised there, honestly, since wikis like this can be a good indication of how the fanbase is perceiving the direction of a story or certain details and so on. But whatever the case may be, definitely go support Halopedia. You can follow it on Twitter, and there's a Discord that I hop into now and then, so if you love lore, this is a great place to hang out. But that's all for today. I am so hyped about the new encyclopedia and all the possibilities it might hold. I would absolutely love if they made an actual canon Warthog run for the Pillar of Autumn, since the version in the game is impossible, being three times longer than the actual ship, but that's probably never going to happen. If it were going to happen, that would have happened with Warfleet, and it didn't. In the realm of possibilities, though, I would love if some of the various Mjolnir armors that don't have formal designations, such as the Forward Unto Dawn Mark IV, were finally given some designations. I also hope we might see some new ships visualized, like a Covenant Frigate or the DDS-class supercarrier. My ultimate dream would be a Halo Galaxy map laying out the spheres of influence for each faction, but that's probably a bigger pipe dream than the canon Warthog run for the Autumn. 
but please let me know your hopes in the comments below and maybe share any stories about the Master Chief in universe or not if you're up for it. This is a celebration of the icon himself after all. Stick around for the Patreon shout out and until next time this has been Halo Cannon. First, I'd like to give a big thank you to our Horospice patrons. First, there's Hope, then we have Freight, SS Dikochan, Discombobulated Sycophant, Justin Montgomery, Ada Frame, and Man in the Dark. Thank you all for your amazing support of the channel. Next, I'd like to thank our theoretical patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or get a direct shout out, check out patreon.com slash Halo Cannon. You can simply support the channel or get additional benefits such as behind the scenes materials, including raw audio for upcoming videos, or even shout outs like this. All patrons now get early access to certain videos as well, and more benefits are to come. However, your continued viewership is more than enough for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. If you really enjoy my stuff, Turn on that notification bell so you can be among the first to see new videos when they release. But for all my fellow Canaanites, keep on being awesome.